Take it. Yes, please. Uh, the first thing I wanted to ask you, Mr. Ellsberg, is why you came to Syracuse, what you'll be talking about today. It's WikiLeaks and the Pentagon Papers, right? Well, there's going to be a discussion, I think, the title of which is From the Pentagon Papers to WikiLeaks. Of course, the uh, WikiLeaks is the first, the recent disclosures are the biggest unauthorized disclosures or leaks since the Pentagon Papers. So the two are linked together all the time. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> how has, do you think, the technology of WikiLeaks and the Internet af affected the way a leak works? Well, uh, I couldn't have put out uh, the volume of stuff that the source to WikiLeaks uh, and the accused person so far as Bradley Manning uh, put out with the digital technology. Uh, I used the leading technology of the time, Xerox, uh, and I couldn't, have, without that, I couldn't have put out 7,000 pages of top secret documents. And even that took me a long time to make a number of copies, one page at a time. The early machines didn't collate and they didn't, uh, I'm quite, and they weren't as fast. I'm quite jealous of the later machines. But I couldn't have, I couldn't have done what uh, WikiLeaks has done. Uh, so the possibility of putting out really large amounts of information, of course, exists now in a way that it never did before, which I think is a good thing. It increases the magnitude of the impact, do you think? Well, the, um, I think the impact depends on a fairly comprehensive release that shows a pattern. Uh, if you just put out one document, the government will say, oh, that person was not in the loop, or we rescinded that the next day or that was just one person's opinion. Uh, the Pentagon Papers showed a 23-year period of very consistent patterns of deception and illegality and uh, hopeless escalation, really. And I think those patterns made, made a lot of difference. So for years, I've really urged people to, to consider putting out comprehensively you know, large files of, of information that would really be compelling in, uh, in their message. And that really hasn't happened, although it could have. There have been studies like the Pentagon Papers uh, since then, and they should have been put out, I think, but haven't been. We know that in part because some of them do get declassified many years later, but we needed it much earlier. So uh, in, in whoever the source was, and let's say Bradley Manning, the accused person, I think really uh, did put out a volume of material here from which one can make very important conclusions that you couldn't have decided on from just uh, a very a small release. And about Mr. Manning, uh, the, what are your thoughts on the potential punishments that they're talking about for him, the death penalty? Uh, well, the, the death penalty is a new uh, addition here with this charge of aiding the enemy, which I think is an absurd charge. It doesn't have uh, intent in it, so I would think it's very questionable constitutionality. It's extremely broad. I would say if we're not looking at intent, then the people who are aiding the enemy, if the enemy is Al-Qaeda, I think reasonably, uh, the people who are aiding Al-Qaeda's recruitment are the people who occupied Iraq and are keeping us there and are keeping bases in Afghanistan and escalating there. I think uh, Al-Qaeda's recruiting depends crucially on those policies. And that I'm talking now about the White House and the Defense Department and the State Department. Whereas someone who's trying to get us out of, of those places is challenging, uh, I think, uh, al-Qaeda's recruiting. But uh, I'm not saying, of course, that the White House intends that, but the law as written doesn't have an intent requirement. It just says aiding the enemy in some way. Of course, uh, I was accused in similar terms uh, for the Pentagon Papers. But the uh, I think he is quite likely to get a very heavy prison sentence, if, if, if for nothing more than for violating military regulations. He probably, they do have a strong case on him on that, simply unloading or downloading material that he wasn't authorized to download. They can probably prove that uh, if they're charging it. And that alone would, uh, could probably put him away for a long time. I think I've been predicting for some time they would go for a life sentence. Of course, in my case, Again, I faced uh, 115 years possible sentence in prison, so I had the same charge. Mm. And, well, you're sitting here, so I guess. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you, is the, do you feel like the leaking is getting a little bit overused with WikiLeaks? Everything seems to be a leak. Do you think it's getting out of control? No. Uh, the, there is material in this vast amount of material. There's a good deal of information 
that didn't demand to be released or you know didn't is not of great significance to the public probably, and some of it perhaps should not have been released. There may be material in there that I would not have released or that should not be released. But I think in fact there's a great we're finding more and more material in it that uh, uh, serves a very important purpose either to the United States or to the world to be known. For example, uh, the cables about the corruption in Tunisia seem to have had a significant role in the response in Tunisia to the immolation of the man, Bouazizi, who uh, burned himself to death actually, but at the same time the cables from WikiLeaks were part of that revulsion against their own government that led to the overthrow there. That in turn, of course, led to the uprising in Egypt. So right there you have an, an immense uh, benefit so far as we've seen so far, a movement toward democracy in a very authoritarian part of the world. And uh, uh, I, I would say far from there being too many leaks, there are not nearly enough disclosures of information the public needs to know. There should be much more and I would like to see uh, many more Bradley Mannings, frankly, but uh, or whoever was the source. But of course, putting Bradley Manning on trial, facing life in prison or even possibly death, is meant to deter others and probably will considerably deter them. I just hope it won't entirely do so. I guess what I wanted to get at was that not all of the leaks have been true. There have been some leaks from WikiLeaks that were not true, and it seems like that not true. Uh, incorrect. Yeah. No, I haven't been aware. What are you referring to? I'm not sure I have seen uh, disclosures that were invalid in some way. WikiLeaks did say on its website that... What? WikiLeaks did say on its website that there were some that were proven to be um, incorrect or... Kind of I think not. Uh, what I think maybe you're referring to is that in the uh, Iraq war logs that they released, they inadvertently left in the names. They had tried to redact names of informants uh, to the U.S. forces. Uh, and they did, in fact, withhold 15,000 out of 90,000 cables that they had, one-sixth. But uh, they did leave in some names that should not have been left in, and they have acknowledged that. And in the future, I mean, in the, in the next release, they were much more careful and I think uh, did not release any names. The Pentagon has not admitted. But I'm not aware that uh, of actual disinformation or let's say false information that's come out through leaks. That could happen. There could be deliberate. Actually, uh, we know that uh, there was a proposal by a private firm doing intelligence work for the military that was proposing to put in a false, a forged documents that would discredit WikiLeaks if they, if they reveal them. But I'm not aware that that's come up yet. I see. And I mean, are journalists doing enough verification on things that come out through WikiLeaks? It's kind of like something is leaked, you assume it to be this top secret, true thing. Are journalists slacking in doing their job of fact checking? Or not? Well, there's nothing to stop them from uh, doing as much fact checking as they want. Uh, the uh, WikiLeaks, since the release of the Afghan war logs and the release of the State Department cables, has only put out on its own website with only a couple of exceptions, documents that were already chosen and reported on by one of the or more of the newspapers to which they were, with which they were working, uh, the Guardian, the Times, the Der Spiegel, El País, and Le Monde. So in effect, the decision as to what to put out on these state cables has been by the newspapers. And uh, I'm not sure that they've uh, abused that, that I'm aware of. The uh, uh, there hasn't really been much question raised as to the authenticity of the, inf of the cables or the information, which isn't to say that everything in them is correct. It's reporting in our official circles, and some of that could be wrong. But uh, uh, the press, I think, I, I don't know what process they've gone through, but they've, it's up to them as to what to put out. And actually, the result has been that so far only so less than 2% of the material that was made available to WikiLeaks has been published on the State Department cables. Out of 260,000 cables, less than 2% have been have come out. So a lot of judgment has been put into that. And the very common statement that uh, it was an indiscriminate release is almost the opposite of the truth. There's been very great discrimination. 
and uh, so far. So uh, I don't think that's been a problem. Could it be a problem? Of course. But uh, has it been? I'm not aware of it. Now, when you released the Pentagon Papers, you had to sort of go to a newspaper and say to them, here they are, will you release them? Whereas in this day and age, it's all you know, inter internet-based, reaching a lot of different people with the website. Do you feel like media, media is almost being, their job of a public watchdog is being taken away by this internet? Well, no, as I just said, that's not the way it's worked uh, on any of these releases, but especially on these, this huge one of the State Department cables. The information was made available digitally to these five newspapers, actually not to the Times. The Guardian chose to share it with the Times rather than Assange. So they've made, they had weeks to go over it, which isn't any too long for such a huge volume of material, but they're still doing it. They're still coming up with stuff, and they will indefinitely, perhaps for months or even years. It may be years before we've seen even the majority of that information. So I think that Assange was right in choosing to bring the mainstream press into it and let th with their much greater resources. Uh, WikiLeaks, it seems, bluffed a little bit on how big their base was for analyzing this stuff. They talked about hundreds of volunteers, but really it turns out most of them were not, almost none of them were really active or able to communicate with. So their resources were very limited, really, to a handful of people. and. Uh, <clears throat> Rather than put everything out on the web, which they could have done, their choice has been so far to go through the press. Now, in the case of the Afghan and the Iraq cables, as the press put out their stories, WikiLeaks did put out the entire uh, amount on the simultaneously on their website. And actually, I think that was questionable practice. Uh, could have led to some people being damaged, uh, harmed by their doing that without uh, having read everything or knowing entirely what they were doing. Uh, I don't think that was good practice. The Pentagon, of course, warned very much that there would be people killed as a result. But they've had to acknowledge, uh, some six months later, that no one, to their knowledge, has been harmed. So this potential harm has not been realized, fortunately. And looking forward to tonight's speech, what do you hope that the students will get out of the, uh, the lecture, the conversation? Well, I th one factor is I think that there is, uh, that will come up tonight, I'm sure, is that the Obama administration is conducting an unprecedented kind of war on whistleblowers. They've had uh, five prosecutions so far uh, underway. One has led to a guilty plea uh, against whistleblowers, against leakers. This has never happened before. No, no president has ever done more than one before, and only three presidents have brought one. So Obama is, is, is prosecuting almost three, twice as many people as all previous presidents. How bad is that? I think it's very bad. I, think, I, I hope that people will get the feeling, that understanding, that we've been for a long time, this is an assertion of mine, let's say, conducting a secret foreign policy to a very large extent. The idea that the public eventually knows pretty much everything of what we've done or what we are doing or what our policies are is mistaken, actually. We have a, a very important covert side to our uh, relationships in the world and our actions. And the only way we can have any democratic influence on that policy is if we know more about it. And that really means we rely on whistleblowers of the kind who are being prosecuted right at this moment by Obama. So I, I hope that people will see, especially in a school that's so heavily into journalism and communications, that our free speech and our free press is under attack now, ever since 9-11, but is in, in particular, surprisingly, under President Obama. And that uh, the need for the defense of that is uh, very great. I was just in a building, I understand, that has the First Amendment inscribed on its walls. Well, uh, that will just be a historical memory unless I think we act now to defend it. And we are currently in that building. Um, Looking back at the Pentagon Papers, would you have done anything differently about the entire situation? About? About, like the, about releasing the Pentagon Papers and the events that followed. Would you have done anything I mean, in the past? Yes. In the past? Yes, I, I wish very much that I had released the documents in my possession in the Pentagon, in my safe, when I was an official in 64-65 rather than giving them to the Senate in 69 or the newspapers in 71, seven years later. 
I think if I'd put those same documents from 64, 65, which showed our secret foreign policy there, which at that time was to initiate a major war in Vietnam while telling the electorate that uh, President Johnson opposed widening the war and opposed such a large war, which was the opposite of the truth. Uh, he got a landslide victory on the basis of that. I think if I had put those documents out in 64 in the fall, he would still have won the election because the alternative was Senator Goldwater who wanted an even larger war. But he could not have enlarged the war. Congress and the public were so against that. That's why they voted for him on false pretenses. And they were so against that that if I think if I'd revealed the planning that was going on for enlarging the war at that time, I could have saved 58,000 American lives and millions of Vietnamese. So that's a very heavy burden of responsibility. I didn't think of doing that at that time, and I, I wish I had, and I wish I'd acted on it. I'm sure there are many people who've thought in, in subsequent years of doing it, but they haven't acted on it. And Bradley Manning is somebody who not only thought it, but he actually put his life on the line on that and accepted a real risk, I think, of life in prison, which he foresaw as a possibility from the beginning. Is there anything else you'd like to, to say? No, tonight I think we'll tell the story. Great. I really appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much for speaking.